Welcome, my name is Peter, and yes, this is how I normally open all my boxes and packages. Please do not be alarmed. Today I'm going to show you a revolutionary and world-changing new creativity technique that could open up a whole new world of drawing and doodling for you. But first I want to mention a couple things about the pen I'm going to be using in this video, which is a custom bespoke pen made especially for me, which I'm happy about, of course. I found this pen on Instagram by searching various pen-related hashtags, which I recently realized that I could do. Just typing in some weird things like hashtag custom fountain pens or hashtag pen making, stuff like that. I somehow found this person on Instagram uh, who had like 80 followers and only like six posts. It felt like a little bit of a gamble, but I saw that they had some cool pens. I didn't even know if it was like a real account or a like a bot account just reposting other pen pictures. But I sent them a message because I saw a pen, a picture of a pen on their profile that I liked. I was like, hey, can you make me a pen like this? And then of course it turned out, I think that they're a real person. Well, obviously they ended up making and sending me a pen. Uh, and they responded to me and I could talk to them and I could like tell them what I wanted in a pen and I could choose various things about it, you know, like the, the, the wood type and the, what kind of finish I wanted, like the matte, if I want it to be matte black or a more of a glossy finish. I think when they do the glossy finish, they just put crazy glue on it. Super glue or they, the, the, the pen turners call it CA glue. I think that stands for cyanoacrylate. And then they, they put glue on the outside and then just polish it up with that crazy like 12,000 grit sandpaper. Anyways, what I wanted was this matte black, blacked out, kind of ominous and plain pen, sort of inspired by a nuclear submarine. It's kind of intense and utilitarian but also an element of beauty to it because if you look closer, you can see that it does have that wood grain from the African black wood. I had this conversation with this person and I'll put a link to their profile, of course, down in the description. Definitely go check them out. Give them some business if you want to order a custom pen because I felt, I felt very good. Like I'm an artist. I love it when people order stuff from me, right? Whether it's my original drawings or my books. And so I felt really good about giving another artist business, right? I felt like it's, it kind of completed some sort of cycle or continuum in the universe, artists buying from other artists, sort of like that. And so I'm happy I'm in like in a place where I can buy from other artists. Anyways, I got the pen. It came, it's got, it's like a black, it's African blackwood. It's got a black back number six nib, I think. And it works great. All right, less about the pen now, more about this revolutionary pink square method. What happened was I wanted to start drawing, but I wanted to loosen up a little bit first, kind of get the juices flowing. So I pulled out a pink post-it note and I started doodling on it. And I'll be honest, I, at first I never intended for this pink post-it note to be a part of the doodle to go, I never intended for it to, to go any further than just existing at the very beginning of the video. But as I drew, I realized, hey, maybe I can just take what I've drawn here on the pink post-it note and kind of tear it off of the pad of post-it notes and stick it right there onto the paper. The paper is the Rhodia dot pad that I've been using recently. I like it. And the dots there kind of in guaranteed that I could stick it on there straight. And I didn't really need to stick it on there straight. I could have stuck it on an angle, but I gave myself that little rule that I would stick it on there straight for no reason. And I stuck it on there and then I just continued drawing like, like the square meant nothing. Like I could draw on the square. I could draw off the square. I could draw lines that went both on and off the square, irregardless of borders. Isn't that a great word? Irregardless. Mm. And then I, I, I pulled out another pink square 
And I put that on there as well. I drew on both of them and connected those both to the drawing. And then I realized I could move the pink squares and move chunks of the drawing around. And where one chunk had been, it was now in another place of the drawing. And I could now complete that part of the drawing with something else entirely. It's like making little little transplants and it helped me stay a little bit more detached and loose with my drawing because even though I was drawing with ink with pen which is usually very permanent using these two pink squares whatever I drew in this drawing really might not be permanent if and I, I drew this whole section over here I could pick it up and take it and put it down in a whole other area of the drawing and it could totally change the flow of the drawing, the balance of it, the composition. I could rotate the sections in the pink in the pink squares, and it really made me let go a little bit, which was good. Now, of course, you don't need to use pink squares. You also could use green squares. The ink I used here was platinum carbon ink, black, and I was very happy at the with, with the limited or maybe almost negligible amount of of smudging that went on. I think the only time I ever smudged is if I put my hand down on top of any ink that was still wet. But if I let the ink dry, which happened pretty fast, I could, without worry, put my hand down on top of the areas that I had already drawn and there was no smudging. Which is good, because that's one of the most frustrating things that I run into sometimes, is not being able to put my hand down on, on top of the drawing and with, with, without experiencing some smudging. But I, I'm, I'm very entertained by this pink square method that I inadvertently d developed just now. And I think I will put a um, kind of a nice clickbaity title here, like, Peter Draws Presents the Pink Square Method, Unlocking your creativity because obviously I didn't plan out this method. I didn't intend it, but I really do think this drawing turned out in a way that it never would have if I hadn't been moving around sections of it. Have you ever done one of those image puzzles where it's like uh, a bunch of little squares that form an image and then you have to slide the squares around to arrive at the final image? Right? I don't know if that make, that was a good way to describe the puzzle, but I felt like that was kind of what was happening, except that I was moving the squares around while I was drawing the picture, right? And it kind of kept me entertained and engaged that my drawing was shifting and moving, like there were tectonic plates on the paper, keeping me on my toes. It was fun. I also listened to some music while I was drawing. I don't know how long this took, but maybe if you... I'll tell you the albums I listened to while I was drawing today. Or actually, it was yesterday. Uh, I guess you could add up the runtime of all these albums, and you'll see how long it took me to draw this. Um, I listened to, first, Krung Bin, their new album, Mordecai. Pretty good album. Uh, then I listened to The Sun's Tirade by Zaya Rashad. Then I listened to M83, I listened to their album, Hurry Up, We're Dreaming, but it's, had, it's a two-disc album, and I only listened to the first disc, which is pretty good. And uh, it's kind of like listening to a movie or something, but it was a little bit too... I don't know, there's something about it that was kind of putting me to sleep a little bit. And then I listened to Wake Me Up a little bit, I, then I transferred to listening to Icky Thump by The White Stripes, and then Fashion Nugget by Cake. And then I know previously I was saying that the M83 album was putting me to sleep a little bit, but then I listened to A Day Without Rain by Enya to kind of finish off the drawing. Now, that is that is kind of a gamble for me because sometimes the Enya album, uh, you know, listening to Enya will put me to sleep, but sometimes something about it really inspires and, and motivates me because it's just so epic and beautiful. And I kind of grew up listening to Enya because that's what st kind of stuff my dad listened to. So, it's just, you know, if you listen to music that you have a long history with and is deeply ingrained in your brain, uh, th there's something that's really pleasurable about that for me, 
because you can really kind of sing along with it in your head or verbally, right? So I enjoy that. Uh, but that really helped me finish out, finish out the drawing strong, you know? So those are the one, two, three, four, five, six, or five, five and a half albums I listened to. The M83 album is really pretty long. I listened to one album's length of it. Anyways, and then I, I cut trees on RuneScape the whole time, also at the same time. I think I'm kind of weirdly addicted to never only doing one thing at a time, right? Like as I was editing this video, I have three monitors. On one monitor, but way over on the left, I was watching either House or Top Gear the whole time. In the middle monitor, I was doing the video editing. And on the right-hand monitor, I was once again just cutting trees on RuneScape the whole time. So it's like, I want to be doing as many things as possible. I don't know why. And they're not, I mean, that's not even like a productivity thing because, uh, you know, cutting trees on RuneScape and watching Top Gear, these aren't even things I can be happy about later in my life that I was doing. These aren't even accomplishments, right? I don't know. It's weird. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. Maybe if you try out a, anything like this uh, pink square method, moving parts of the drawing around, I don't know if it made sense to you, why it was cool for me. I think I'm definitely going to try something like this again. Maybe I'll try it. With, uh, maybe I'll get some of those um, like white post-it notes. I mean, it do, I think it does look cool how they're a bright pink on the white paper. The, the high contrast, right? But I might try it also with just white squares and see if it, see how it looks where there's less contrast. You gotta try different things. Let me know if you try something similar and if it is a interesting or helpful method for you also. All right. All right. See y'all later. Goodbye.